Good afternoon, brothers and sisters! Gising pa po ba ang mga anak ni Kristo? O sige po, tignan natin. God is good! All the time! God is good! All the time! Okay, palakasan po tayo. Patron and lower box, God is good! Grabe lang po ba? Hindi grabe, grabe ulit. God is good. All the time. Upper box, God is good. All the time. General admission, dapat po mas malakas pa. God is good. All the time. Grabe, praise the Lord, hallelujah. You know, God is really a good God for giving us such inspiring and awesome speakers. Like Brother Tito Cads, um, Father Hans Magdurulang, Bishop Ted Bacani, and our next speakers, Father Jerry, Father Bart Pastor, and Brother Bo Sanchez. Praise the Lord, grabe. Grabe, grabe, Amen. Alam niyo po, before I stand here in front of you, God has given me an inspiration. This verse comes from Isaiah 60 verse 1. She said, it is said there, Arise and shine for your light has come. The glory of God rises upon you. Meaning the Holy Spirit is here in this place filling us, giving us His power so that we will be awakened. Our spirit will be awakened. So, brothers and sisters, what we're gonna do is not just on presentation. We would like to invite you to stand up. Lift the name of Jesus with us. Amen? Amen. So, let's say, Jesus. 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 Now the Jesus.
God in the highest. Salamat na marami ating mga youth sa Spirit of Love. Ang gagaling nyo talagang sumayaw. Powered na powered ng banal na Espiritu. Ang mga dancers and uh, musicians ng Spirit of Love. Kasi so, nga pala, recognize din natin yung mga dumating at dumalo rito, yung mga Catholic member ng Catholic Lay Preachers Association of the Philippines. Kalap, andyan po sila. At uh, yung God's Helping Hands, uh, andito rin po sila. No? So, brothers and sisters, alam ko lahat sa inyo ay gusto na namang uh, magsayaw. Ano? Kaya tawagin na po natin ang uh, magtuturo sa atin ng bagong sayaw ng charismatic renewal. Walang iba kundi ang ating minamahal na spiritual director ng uh, Diocese of Antipolo. Tawagin po natin si Reverend Father Jerry Ibarola. Mabuhay, Araneta! Para pong si Vice Ganda. Na po. Kumusta po mga karismatik? Kumusta po? Sabi ho nila, ako daw ay magtotok kagaya ho ni Father Ans. Pero hindi po totoo yun. Ang imbitasyon po sa akin, magturo sa inyo ng sayaw. Kaya hinihintay ko magsitayo po kayo at samahan ninyo akong magsayaw. Tulungan ninyo ako mga taga-diocis ng Antipolo, mapapahiya tayo dito pagka hindi nagsayawan ang mga taga rito. Ito lang po yung kanta at isasayaw. Adrasabante, adrasabante, at ipadyak ang paa. Adrasabante, adrasabante, at ikembot ang baywang. Abante, abante, atrasatras, abante, abante, atrasatras. Abante, abante, atras, atras. Abante, kay Kristo, walang atras. So, pwede ho ba, mga kapatid, kayo po ito mayo, sasayaw tayong lahat. Ulit po, atras, abante, atras, abante, at ipadyak ang paa. Atras, abante, atras, abante, Ati kembot ang bewang, abante, 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 atras, atras, abante, abante, atras, atras, abante, abante, atras, atras, kay Kristo, walang atras. Palapakan natin ang Diyos. Magsiupo na ho. Mga kapatid, sa gawahin ng Panginoon, wala pong atrasan. Amen. Kaya sabihin mo sa katabi mo ngayon, patay kong patay ang paglilingkod sa Panginoon. Na po, mamatay ka na dyan sa pagiging karismatik at paglilingkod sa Diyos. Amen. Ang aking pong misyon ngayon, ay mangikayat sa inyo na dagdagan ninyo ang ibibigay ninyo sa ating love offering. No po? Sa Ibanghelyo po nila, ni San Lucas, dalawa po yung pumunta sa templo, isang mayaman at isang mahirap. Yun pong mayaman, ibinigay niya yung malaking halaga at yun po'y sobra-sobra lamang doon sa kanyang pera. Pero yung mahirap po, sinasabi ho, nagbigay siya ng lahat ng meron siya. Ibinigay po niya para sa Panginoon. Kaya sabihin mo nga dyan sa katabi mo, huwag kang kuripot. Ulitin ninyo, Huwag kang kuripot, matuto kang magbigay. Siksik liglig at umaapaw ang ibabalik ng Panginoon. Amen. Amen! Hindi po ba sinasabi ng PCP2, Father Nelson, walang mahirap na hindi makapagbibigay, walang mayamang hindi 
nangangailangan. Lahat tayo ay mayaman. Amen. Amen. Dahil tayo mga anak ng Diyos. Amen. Mayaman ang tatay natin. Amen. Dumating na pala si Doktora Espiritu. Malaki ang ibibigay nito. No po. Kaya ilabas na ninyo ang inyong mga bag, buksan ang inyong mga wallet para sa ating love offering. Magbigay tayo sa Panginoon, tayo ay magbigay. Magbigay tayo sa Panginoon, tayo ay magbigay. Huwag kukunin yung pinakamaliit, yung ikunin yung pinakamalaki. Magbigay tayo sa Panginoon, tayo ay magbigay. Magbigay tayo sa Panginoon, tayo ay magbigay. May nagbigay po 1,000. Sino kaya magbibigay ng 2,000? Magbigay tayo sa Panginoon. Nasaan po yung basket, yung mga kolektor? Nasaan? Magbigay tayo sa Panginoon, tayo ay magbigay. Dagdagan, 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 dagdagan. Malaki ang babayaran natin dito ho sa SL, dito ho <laughs> sa Araleta. Kaya dagdagan ho ninyo ang ibibigay ninyo. Purihin natin ang Diyos, pasalamatan natin ang Panginoon. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Hello. Salamat, uh, Father Jerry. Talagang dapat dagdagan. Mukhang uh, marami naman ang bumubunot at dinadagdagan ang uh, kanilang mga love offering. Brothers and sisters, the charismatic renewal movement has been blessed and continuously blessed by the Holy Spirit. At para maibahagi sa ating lahat ngayon kung anong nagaganap sa kasalukuyan, ay tawagin po natin ang dating Pangulo ng National Service Committee of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal in the Philippines, the guiding priest of the Charismatic Renewal from the Archdiocese of Palo Leyte. Let's welcome Reverend Father Bart Pastor. charismatic greetings but one thing I would like to ask you is you say to yourself with conviction I am loved are you sure of that you turn to the other person next to you you are loved and we all say we all are loved And why? Because our God is love. Our God is love. Okay, go. Our love is oh. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> I was invited by Brother Kaju to be one of the speakers of this gathering, twice I refused him because I said, I'm not from Luzon, I'm from the Visayas. I cannot speak Tagalog, although I'm Filipino, because I speak Waray. And Cebuano. How many of you are here who speak Cebuano? Waray? Oh, marami pala. So I'm going to speak to you in tongues. Since you are all charismatics, you can understand tongues. 
maupay nga gabi ha iyo nga tanan. Aw, oh, gabi pa ba? Hapon. Anyway, I thank the Lord that we are here gathered. As I said, I cannot speak to you in Waray because most of you cannot understand Waray. Imported ito ngayon. Now, in my 51 years as a priest, I have had many experiences. And one of those experiences years ago, when I was Paris priest of Palo Cathedral, I was maybe 28 years old. The first charismatics I encountered came to my parish. Three young pretty girls from Manila. And they were wearing long skirts and three-fourths sleeves. And during the time, ang uso was ano yung uso noon? Mini skirt. I said, these three girls they are supposed to come from Manila, but they are in a very strange attire. And they told me they were from St. Paul College, Manila. And they had a ukulele with them. They came after greeting me and they said, Father, we would like to sing to you. Hmm. And we would like to tell you about our love of Jesus. What kind of persons are you? They said, we are charismatics. Charismatic? First time I heard that term, charismatic. And they started singing, I have decided to follow Jesus. And then they gave their short testimonies of how they met Jesus and how they were going around to the Visayas, to our province, to share their testimonies about Jesus. After that, I told them, sorry, are you Catholics? Yes, we are Catholics. Are you sure? Catholics don't sing such songs. Catholics don't wear such attires. And Catholics don't Tell their stories about Jesus because that is personal. Only Protestants do that. But we are Catholics. No. And they asked me permission, can we go to around your parish, go to the school and proclaim Jesus? I said, no. You know, during that time, I was very, I was not, not, not charismatic. I said, no. I don't want to see your pretty faces tomorrow in this parish. Leave the parish today. That was my first encounter with the charismatic renewal. Second encounter, missionary priests, Americans, Franciscan missionaries who were working in our archdiocese. They just came from the States and they passed by my convent and they asked, they told me that they had a retreat when they were on vacation in the States and they told me it was a charismatic retreat conducted by a fellow Franciscan priest, Father Richard Rohr. And they told me they were speaking in tongues during that retreat. So I got curious, what's that speaking in tongues? What's that charismatic? Here are fellow priests, missionary American priests, telling me about their experience of being baptized in the Spirit, which of course I didn't 
understand at all. Third encounter with the charismatic renewal was when we were having our priest retreat in our archdiocese. The preacher was an American, passionist priest from Japan. And again, in one of the conferences, he told me, told us rather, he was charismatic and his relatives in the States were involved in the charismatic renewal. Again, charismatic. So after the conference, I approached him, Father, can you till, tell me more about this charismatic renewal? I guess that was the first time, or the third time maybe, the Lord started touching my heart. Then, I went to Ateneo de Manila for a summer institute on pastoral counseling. Then I was attending the prayer meeting near Ateneo. Later I was introduced, all of us were taken to Assumption Convent where there was a prayer meeting. Again, of course I did not participate, I was just observing and that was all. It was Father Snyder who facilitated that prayer meeting. I made a retreat in Baguio, trying to find out whether I should continue being a priest or not, because I was very much involved in social action. I was advised to make a retreat. Fifth day of the retreat, I was trying to answer the question given to me, what does God want of you today? I wrestled with that question. I couldn't answer that question. It was at the end of the retreat, my personal retreat. Sunday, I had not celebrated Mass for two weeks. I was not praying because I was very much confused. And the end of the retreat that morning, the sisters were asking me, RVM sisters, can you celebrate Mass with us, Father Bart? Because we have observed you have not celebrated Mass with, with us yet. Can you celebrate Mass? Because it's Sunday. I obliged. Yes, sister. The only reason was because I was staying with them without pay. I went to the sacristy. I put on the vestments. And I saw in the order, it was Pentecost Sunday. Nineteen seventy five, May twelve, I think it was. And during that time there was the first international charismatic conference held in Rome. First time. I didn't know that of course. Okay, I celebrated Mass. But when the reading of the sequence, which was a prayer to the Holy Spirit, I was reading that, and suddenly I got inspired. I, uh, suddenly I didn't know what happened to me. It was a prayer that came from my heart, and it was there that I was touched by the Holy Spirit. And I took that as my baptism in the Holy Spirit. It happened during a Eucharistic celebration of Pentecost. That morning after Mass, I prayed. After not praying for so long, I made a decision. Now I know, Lord, you want me to stay a priest. And today, which is anniversary of that 
baptism the spirit had experienced during mass i would like to thank really the lord for that great immense discovery of the catholic charismatic renewal of the holy spirit through the catholic charismatic renewal i did not go through any seminar i was not taught how to pray the charismatic way of praising I did not even know how to raise my hands and close my eyes. It took me some time to learn that. What Bishop Bakani told me, told us about his traumatic experience of being told to pray in tongues. With me, I was listening to a tape. Go to a quiet room. So I went to my room. Close the door, remain immobile in front or in the presence of the Lord. I did that. Then lose your mouth. So I did. Nobody was watching me anyway. Losing your tongue. I did that for around 20 minutes, nothing happened. And so I said, I don't believe in tongues. I don't believe in healing. I don't believe in prophecies. These were all my experiences. It was only when the Lord took over and the Lord led me to believe by personal experience of praying over the sick that people got healed then I said, Lord, now surrender na ako. I'm not going to question you anymore. I'm not going to doubt you anymore. I'm just open myself to the Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, use me in whatever way. That was the start. It has been a long experience now. I am now, I have been involved in the charismatic renewal since then, 1975. Until now, praise the Lord. And the Lord made experiences that were surprising to me. I wanted at one time, because of my sinfulness, I wanted to be a hermit. I asked the bishop permission to go to the mountain area to be a hermit. He gave me permission. But then the Lord had other plans. Instead of a hermitage, we have the Paraclete Renewal Center now which is a center for renewal, the charismatic renewal in our area. I wanted to stay at Paraclete as a hermit and to stay there until the end of my life. The bishop asked me, why penance? And I want to dedicate the rest of my life just to seek the Lord's forgiveness for what I had done before. Instead, the Lord took me all over the world to preach the good news of the charismatic renewal. So much so that I was able to visit 27 countries, more than 100 cities, conducting retreats, seminars, conferences, and all kinds of activities connected with the charismatic renewal. And that has been what I'd say the Lord had given me the mission. Brothers and sisters, I can testify to you so many things, but today I have been told to share with you what the Lord is doing with us in the Catholic Charismatic Renewal in the Philippines today. So let me share with you some things, facts that, you know, I learned in one of my loves you know, I, uh, let me share you a secret. When I was ordained priest 51 years ago, our spiritual director told us, you should have two things you need to be with all the time. One is the Bible. The second is your breviary. So I said, and he said, the breviary is supposed to be your wife. Okay, 
my wife. You should not be separated in any way from your bravery. It is a mortal sin during the time we were told. Mortal sin if you fail to pray the breviary. But today, because I discovered the cell phone, the cell phone, the one of the greatest discoveries in my priestly life is the cell phone. Only 10 years ago. And the cell phone has become my wife. I'll tell you why. In the cell phone, I have the Holy Bible. I have the breviary. I have religious music. I have meditations. I have all kinds of beautiful, wonderful things to lead me closer to the Lord in prayer. And this, breviary, uh, this cell phone represents something more than this, what's contained here. Because this represents for me the Catholic charismatic renewal. You might be surprised why I say that. I will explain later. Just be patient. First, before I go to explaining the breviary as symbolic of the charismatic renewal in my life, let me share with you first what's happening in the Philippines with regards to the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. What am I supposed to do with this? Well, I to Samini. Brother Kajo? Ah, there. I suppose you can read that. No needs to explain. Fact number one. March 16, 15, 21. You know that because Yoyo Williami sang that. Philippine was discovered by Magellan and Christianity was introduced. Fact number two. March 16, 2021. We are all looking forward to celebrate the fifth centennial anniversary of the Christianization of the Philippines. This is now the sixth year, I think. Number three, today, this is not very accurate, but more or less, 80% of Filipinos identify themselves as Catholics, roughly 80 million of the Philippine population, more or less. Number four, 30% of Filipino Catholics, or only 24 million, are practicing their faith. If they go to Mass regularly on Sundays, the rest are nominal, unevangelized, unconverted, unchurched. I suppose you agree with me in that. Some 9,000 diocesan and religious priests are serving the Catholic population in the entire Philippines. There are roughly 8,000 priests in 3,486 parishes, quasi parishes, and mission stations. The rest are in school work special ministries, and retired from active parish ministries, like me. I'm retired. Number six, the average ratio in the Philippines, therefore, is one priest to shepherd 10,000 parishioners. In some parishes, there are 15 or even 20,000 with one priest. Seven, ICRES reports an estimated 22 million Filipinos have identified themselves as Catholic renewalists. That is, who somehow have experienced the Catholic charismatic renewal since 1972 up to the present and will rank number two after Brazil. 
worldwide. Adherents of the CCR in the Philippines are involved in parish-based prayer groups, office prayer groups, covenant communities, schools of evangelization, charismatic ministries and fellowships, institutes of men and women religious, and charismatic pu publications like Kerigma. The Philippine Catholic Charismatic Renewal Services, PhilCRES, as described by Brother Kajo earlier, is presently the coordinating body of the CCR in the Philippines with the approval of the Catholic Bishops' Conference in the Philippines. He told us how we presented ourselves to the CBCP. Number 10, ICRES reports that there are an estimated 30 million renewalists from the Catholic Church and other Christian churches in the Philippines, part of an estimated 800 million renewalists worldwide. That is combination already of the Catholic and non-Catholics. Non the largest renewal movement in the world. We rank number five worldwide after Brazil, USA, surprisingly China and Nigeria. The Catholic Charismatic Renewal International Services or CARIS is the newly created coordinating body at the CCR worldwide upon the urging of Pope Francis on the occasion of the Golden Jubilee. Last year, it is under the, the Vatican, the custody of Laity, Family and Life with offices in the Vatican. So it is a recognized body, the, the Caris. On June 3, 2017, Pope Francis in his Pentecost Vigil Messons to the CCR called the CCR a flood of grace, sometimes translated current grace, which is the theme. But in my, in my official translation from the Vatican Library, it was called flood of grace in the church and for the church. Now, I'm sorry I have no monitor here that I, that's why I am reading from, from here. Let's hear Pope Francis, the words of Pope Francis himself when he addressed the charismatics. We have assembled here from 120 countries throughout the world to celebrate the sovereign work of the Holy Spirit in the church that occurred 50 years ago and started, he said, an institution? No. An organization? No. He said, a flood of grace, not an institution, not an organization, but a flood of grace of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal, a work that was born, was it Catholic? Again, he answers, no. It was born ecumenical. It was born ecumenical because it is the Holy Spirit who creates unity and the same Spirit who granted this inspiration for this. So it is ecumenical right from the start, as noted also by Bishop Ted, that here in the Philippines, he started ecumenical. 50 years of the Catholic charismatic renewal, a flood of grace of the Spirit. Why? A flood of grace because it has no founder, no bylaws, no structure of governance. Clearly, it has given rise to many expressions that surely are human works inspired by the Spirit with various charisms and all of the service of the church. But before this flood of grace, one cannot erect dikes or put the Holy Spirit in a cage. That was also noted by Brother Kajo earlier. This flood of grace is for the whole church, not just for some, 
and none of us is master and the other servants. No. The Pope says, we are all servants of this flood of grace. So, brothers and sisters, we have heard the very words of Pope Francis that we can say, say with assurance, with conviction. Can we read that together, please, aloud? We are a flood of grace. Again, we are a flood of grace. I choose to use that term instead of current because as Pope Francis noted, a flood of grace, a flood, as dictionary would tell us, a flood is something like a fluid body of water that is rising, that is up, overflowing, and that is submerging a normally body or normally dry land. So, I suppose Pope Francis was talking about normally dry land. The land where the whole world may be. A land maybe the Catholic Church. Dry. Maybe. Don't accuse me of translating that. So as the Catholic Church is very dry. But the Catholic charismatic has come by God's grace, as noted by Bishop Ted, and it has submerged, it was overflowed and overwhelmed the church today. And through the influence of charismatics, we have what we hold now, the renewal of the church and at the same time, the transformation of our society. Second statement. Can we read that together, please? Because it is God's will. How can we explain, for example, that what happened in the United States and brought her through, brought here to, through Hong Kong by Anglicans was the work of the Spirit and it was not really something planned, but it just happened spontaneously because now we can say it is the will of the Holy Spirit, the will of God. Let us know why we say it is the will of God. Can we read that together, the will of the Lord when he prayed for unity? Other, uh, that the world may believe that you sent me. So Jesus prayed for unity, just as he and the Father won. That is the last will and testament, we we'll say, of Jesus at the Last Supper. And so that has to be kept something that is really for us to treasure, that we are, that Jesus prayed for our unity, all the believers. And St. Paul echoes that and exhorts us all today as he exhorted the Ephesians before. And he says, do your best to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. One body and one Spirit as you were also called to the one hope of your call. One Lord, one faith one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. If we know that this is the will of the Lord, how come there is the scandal of division? I remember I used these te same texts from the Holy Bible when I was invited one time to facilitate a reconciliation retreat. In one diocese, bishop, the bishop there was at enmity with his 26 priests who were ready to 
leave their parishes anytime because they could not reconcile on certain matters of administration. They were invited, inviting me to facilitate a reconciliation. They were telling me all their difficulties of relationships. They were really fighting. Cardinal Vidal sent a bishop to facilitate and they would not believe the bishop. So I said, if you don't believe any bishop, you don't believe the cardinal, you don't believe any priest, okay, are you believers of Jesus? Do you call Jesus your Lord? If you call Jesus your Lord, are you ready to obey your Lord since you are priests and bishop? I said, yes. Okay, here is the will of the Lord. Text after text in the Holy Bible, I told them the will of the Lord. At the end of that session, they asked, what shall we do, Father Bart? I said, of course, obey the Lord. Be reconciled. Accept each other. And you know, at the end of that, they signed a covenant of love. And they sang, Ikaw lamang ang aking iibigin. So that's how they reconcile. By the grace of the Holy Spirit. That's how the Holy Spirit works. Now, with that, as the will of the Lord for us to be united. So we obey the Lord and we say, yes, Lord. We will pray and pray and pray to the Father for all of us to experience Christian unity. We Catholic charismatic renewal, uh, charismatics and they who are Christians that we work, we turn to Jesus Christ, our common Savior and Lord. We open ourselves to receive the actions of the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the helper, and we work together as one body of Christ to serve in truth and in love as the Holy Spirit leads us. That's how we are going to pray for that unity that the Father and Jesus wills for us, that our Holy Father, Pope Francis, is asking us to be ecumenical. You know, years ago, when I finished theology, that was a very strange name. And because it was new, Vatican II came out with a pastoral document on ecumenism. I choose it as my thesis in theology. And since then, I have been praying and working and trying to do what I can in my little way to be ecumenical. And I was so happy when Pope Francis came out that you charismatics are supposed to be ecumenical from the very start until today. And I say a great amen to what he wants us to happen in the Catholic Church. So, the first thing that Pope Francis said, ecumenical charismatics, therefore, should promote baptism in the Holy Spirit. That's one. In the same address, he said, second, Aside from baptism in the Spirit, we should continue praising joyfully with exaltation. Witness to the church, the so-called praise, prayer of praise. Which again, Bishop Ted earlier noted that is still, until now, it's very strange with us priests. And then, Pope Francis told us in that same address, that the third thing that we need to do is social action. Baptism, the Holy Spirit. Second, prayer of praise and social action. These three, together with our brethren who are united with us in prayer and in action, maybe the whole world could be transformed by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit needs us, therefore, and if, again, 
all of us here, maybe I don't know how many thousands there are, but if everyone could be convinced through the words of Pope Francis that we should do our best and do our share of spreading the baptism of the Spirit, prayer of praise as we are already doing every day of that, witnessing with power through our praises, and social action, then the world will be renewed by the Spirit through the Catholic charismatic renewal. Amen? So here is a statement that we need to be convinced, every one of us. Can we read that together with conviction? We are baptized in the Spirit. Many times this so-called baptism in the Spirit is not well understood. Let me share with you a discovery, as I said, when I discovered 10 years ago, the cell phone. Very simple thing. But as I reflect over the cell phone, I realize that as the symbol of baptism in the Holy Spirit. Why do I say so? Because when we were baptized and confirmed, we received, of course, the Holy Spirit. That is our connection with God. That is our connectivity with God. That is our being online with God. So I'm using now some things that are very dear to many of us, the younger millennial generation. I identify myself with the millennials. Now, I'm a cell phone in God's gracious hands. Together, we read that. Next, I'm connected online to God through the sacraments of baptism and confirmation. Again, together. Now, if God, I want God to use me as his cell phone, I have to plug in and connect with God in prayer to the power of the Holy Spirit. The cell phone is useless if it's not connected, plugged into the power line of the Spirit, and that is prayer. That's how necessary prayer is for a life of a charismatic Next, I charge up and ask in trust and in love the Holy Spirit to change me and to give me his gifts. So plug, charging. If maglubat, we cannot use easily our cell phones. Next, I switch on and open my mind and heart to the transforming action of the Holy Spirit. So switch. Now, I make myself ready to be used by the Lord to transform my life and to use me by His gifts. Next, I touch the apps to allow the Holy Spirit to work in me and through me for the building up of the body of Christ in ministry and mission evangelization. What we are now doing and what we have been doing so far since the start of charismatic involvement is that we are like cell phones. We connect, we charge up, we plug in, we charge up, we switch on, and we touch the apps so that the Holy Spirit now can use us in his wonderful, mysterious, amazing, surprising ways. Listen to Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, the predecessor of Pope Francis. He said, Today, I would like to extend the invitation to everyone. Let us rediscover, dear brothers and sisters, the beauty of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Let us be aware again of our baptism and our confirmation 
sources of grace that are always present. When I read this message of Pope Benedict XVI way back in 2008, I was so elated. I said, now we have really something to hold on and charismatics to be, to be really no longer ashamed or embarrassed, but really do our best to work for the renewal of the church through baptism in the Holy Spirit. Led by the Spirit, let us engage in charismatic social action or the one the, for the body of Christ. Now, this is something that we have been criticized about. Years ago, in my first year in the charismatic renewal, way back 1977, my dear bishop who is now in heaven, he called me. And he said, Father Bart, you are wasting your time and talents. You charismatics are very good only at prayer. Nothing more. You have no social involvement. You do not do anything to help the poor, the needy around the squatters. I got hurt by that criticism coming from my bishop. Why? Because precisely I was losing my faith years before that because of my involvement in social action. And now he was telling me, you are good at praying, but no social action. I told him, dear bishop, please give us a chance. Give us time. You see, we are trying to establish our relationship with God first in prayer. Maybe later, the Lord will inspire us to go into social action. Of course, the Lord took him to heaven. Another time, he said, call me, you are making a bad impression in the church because you are like quack doctors. Healers, bad impression, as if the church is doing all those. I said, I'm not doing anything. Just lay hands, as the Bible says. No, I said, no. Stop your praying over the sick. Okay, you are my bishop. I obey you. I obey you. You are my authority. But I said, you will be answerable to the Lord because in the Bible, it says, pray over the sick. After a few minutes of silence, he said, no, I cannot stop you. It is the will of the Lord. Go ahead with your prayer to the sick. As Bishop Ted earlier noted, of course, there was so much opposition at the start. But now, praise God, it is gradually being accepted and people are still flocking to prayers for healing. Next. So, what do we do at what we have been doing so far as one body of Christ? As noted that we in the Catholic Charismatic Renewal or the church itself, the Catholic Church and all ecclesial communities, Protestants, born again, and all those denominations, we are said to be the most powerful body, the most powerful entity in the world today if we just wake up from our slumber and we put our hearts and hands together for the social action to transform the world and society. That is the wish of Pope Francis. So, once awakened, however, we can work together in mercy and compassion for the service of society and humanity in charismatic social action. So let me explain, let me outline to you what we can do, what we have been doing. This is like a checklist for us. And what we shall do again together, ecumenical spirit. We have here peace plans. 
peace plans. That is fact. The acronym is very ecumenical. P E A C E. That's coined by the famous Reverend Rick Warren, Baptist, Saddleback Church. The P L A N S was coined by yours truly, Catholic. So I tried to put this together as an outline of what we can possibly do in the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. P, this is an acronym. P, to plant churches of Christ faithful, like BEC and evangelization, versus the prevalent spiritual lostness in the world because of secularism. The greatest enemy now of the church today, we are told by Pope Francis, is secularism, even before by St. John Paul II. Secularism. That's the face of the devil today, and we in the Charismatic Renewal should work for the spiritual life by planting communities of faith. That's what we are doing. That's what we shall be doing with more earnestness. Second, E, to empower servant leaders. This is a theme, not only priests and religious, but lay people. Can you imagine? With the dirt of priests, very few priests to take care of parishioners, Catholics. How many of us there, how many of you rather, charismatics, can supply the demand for servants of the Lord in servanthood. So against devouring greed and rampant corruption by leaders in society. You know that very well. I don't have to explain that. Next, to assist the poor to provide for their basic needs versus widespread material poverty. Many of us have been doing that already. Many of us have been trying our best to assist the poor, the needy around us. That's, praise the Lord, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Next, C, to care for the sick versus endemic diseases and prevalent sickness. You go to our public hospitals, so many people waiting to be attended to by doctors and nurses. Maybe we in the charismatic renewal, together with our separated brethren, can work together in this area, care for the sick. Next, to educate the next generation or the youth versus their extensive literacy and ignorance. Many of us are in school work. And we would like more and more of us, even in non-formal education, to really serve the poor. I realize that because in Tacloban, we have a school run by our community. From the administration to janitors and teachers, we are in the community. And we are trying to build up a community of disciples among our students, especially the senior high. We have just Yesterday, we had the baptism, the Holy Spirit, of 150 senior high students in our school. That will be the start. And we pray that next year, as we get another 150 in senior high, all these will be baptized in the Spirit and will be, will be organized and trained in ministries by the Spirit. Our little way. Also, to protect Mother Earth versus ecological grid degradation, global warming, and climate change. As Pope Francis writes to us in his encyclical Laudato Si. So, we are to be protectors of Mother Earth. Next, to live and build Christian families versus the old pervading culture of death and insidious attacks against family and life. Many of us, or most of us, or even all of us have been doing this involved in the strengthening of our families and protecting ourselves against all those bills in Congress. A, 
to animate for transformational development versus selfish, avaricious pursuits of people who disregard and disrespect others. Then we have N, to network with Christian churches of all denominations, ecumenical in spirit. And then S, to seek justice and peace versus injustice and inequality and armed conflicts in our country and in the world. That is peace plans. All those perhaps we have already been doing, but more the challenge of Pope Francis, go and do more and more and more so that we can really change the world as we pray always, come Holy Spirit, renew the face of the earth. The Holy Spirit needs you and me, dear brothers and sisters. The Holy Spirit needs us to be the instruments of renewal and for us to work hand in hand, not only among us charismatics, but our fellow Catholics and separated brethren so that the world would recognize Jesus really is our Lord. So, in conclusion, here is a timely reminder of Pope Francis. For this reason, uh, no, not Pope Francis, but St. Paul. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of as Brother Gansi would say, power and love and self-control. And we need that to remind us of what we shall be doing. Do we have the spirit of cowardice? Again, do we have the spirit of cowardice? No, of course not. What kind of spirit do we have? Answer. We have the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the spirit of self-control. Remember these words, dear brothers and sisters. And finally, we have say, uh, Pope Francis reminding us, along with this experience, you, CCR, constantly remind the church of the power of praise. Praise that is prayer of gratitude and thanksgiving for God's gracious love. Perhaps some people do not like this way of praying, but surely it is fully a part of the biblical tradition. Take the Psalms, David dances before the Ark of the Covenant, filled with exaltation, and please let us not fall into the attitude of Christians who have the Michael complex, ashamed of the way David chose to praise God. Perhaps exaltation, happiness, joy, that is the fruit of the working of the Holy Spirit. Either, Pope Francis tells us, a Christian experiences joy in his or her work, her heart, or something is wrong. The joy of proclaiming the good news of the gospel. Good news, joyful news. Do not forget this joyful news. The Christian message is always joyful. That's why charismatics are always smiling. Amen? Thank you, Catholic Charismatic Renewal. Imagine Pope Francis thanking us. He said, for what you have given to the church in these 50 years, the church counts on you, on your fidelity to God's word, on your readiness to serve, and on your testimony of lives transformed by the Holy Spirit. So I read with this final message of Pope Francis, encouraging us to move on. We have experienced the past with joy, which surprises the spirit. Let us move on, press forward, and look ahead for what the Holy Spirit will be doing with us, for us, among us and through us for the transformation of the church and of society. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Salamat ng marami, Father Bart. Yan ang talagang priest na pastor ng bayan. 
si, Brad, si Father Barta Pastor. Brothers and sisters, meron lang tayong konting announcement. Uh, lahat po ng mga ushers na nandyan po, ushers po, no? Uh, please proceed to uh, finance room, room number 9, dito po sa likod for further instruction. Meron pong ibibigay sa inyong instruction dito sa likuran, ano? Uh, baba lang po kayo lahat sa finance room at uh, merong instruction si Sister Mila. Uh, recognize din natin ang uh, attendance po at presence ng recent Lord Charismatic Community galing Binian, Laguna. Ayan. Ayan pa pa. So, mga dumating sila from Binian, Laguna. Marami pang dumarating yata. Ano? Baka naman yung iba akala hanggang Merkulis tayo. Hanggang, hanggang linggo lang. O meron pa New Covenant uh, Charismatic Community from Santo Niño, Pandakan. Andiyan pa sila? Yan, Santo Niño, Pandakan. Matatangkad raw ang mga tao riyan sa Pandakan. Brothers and sisters, o Love Plak Yapo, o saan banda, Ere Hidalgo ba yan? O Castillejos o Arlige? No. Yeah. Alba sa Kiapo. Love Black, Kiapo. Richard, brother Richard. Oh, may, may paparito pa ba? <laughs> okay na. Okay, brothers and sisters. Alam naman natin na tayong lahat ay naghihintay ng uh, we want to listen because there's a lot of learnings we are waiting for this afternoon and we want also to get inspired. Ayan. At para ma-inspire ulit tayo, uh, let us welcome the Light of Jesus community to be led by brother Bo Sanchez. The preacher in blue jeans.
Bible tells us that God breathed the breath of life and man became living. So I don't know. I don't know how much air that God breathed in and God breathed out, but 50 years, my God, the church is alive in 50 years. And it's God telling us, God is alive in me. God is alive in you. God is alive in our church. God is alive in His place. If you believe that, make some noise. Amen. Amen. So tonight, we're going to have a little bit of fun. Father Jerry, great steps. Great steps for your dancing. So we're going to continue dancing today. So I'm going to teach you a few dances. Very, very easy. So when our praises go up, remember that the reign of Jesus Christ comes down. So when we say our praise goes up, we do this. Two hands, come on. Our praise goes up like this. And His rain comes down. Very good. Again, our praise goes up. And the rain comes down. And it's, it goes something like this. Our praise goes up. Your rain comes down. Come on, you try singing it out. Our praise goes up. Your rain comes down. Come on, you try it out. Just two, just two. Our praise. right one more time let's try all the men all the men just you our praise goes up all the men come on a little bit louder now men okay the women all the women your church yourselves a big hand awesome dancing awesome dance so, good. so today let's continue to celebrate his presence let's continue to celebrate the life he has given us in this church if you're ready brothers and sisters again give jesus a loud shout of praise hands up come on
Well, let's say a little bit louder now. Hey. Our praise goes up. Your rain comes down. Our praise, Our praise goes up. Yeah. Your rain comes down. Shout it out. We shout to your praise. We celebrate. church can you greet the people around you happy birthday you know 50 years ago the Catholic charismatic renewal movement began in the Philippines but we all know that this Holy Spirit movement began 2,000 years ago in the very first Pentecost and I don't know about you but I think and I believe that it is such a huge blessing to live in the days to see the fruits of those seeds that were planted before. That after so many persecution, after so many prison cells that the apostles had to face, after problems that they have faced, today we stand strong as one family, as one community, as one Catholic, charismatic church. And maybe today you're coming in here and you're also facing your own versions of persecutions, your own versions of prison cells and problems, maybe in ministry life or even in your personal life. But today I want to invite you to remember the faithfulness of God through the years. That after all these years, time after time, generations after generations, our God has never failed and He will not fail now and He will never, ever fail. And so today I invite you to come into the presence of our God who never fails and to commit once again our lives to the calling that He has put on our shoulders. Let's all come in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can lift up your hands to heaven as a sign of surrender. Heavenly Father, we commit to you once again our lives. And we believe that in our faithfulness, you are more faithful. You are faithful to complete whatever work that you have began in our lives. So God, we surrender to you our lives. We say yes to you again.
say I'm blessed. I want you to high five some 35 people around you and tell them there's more.
Grab your seats. Touch somebody beside you. Tell that person God will continue to speak to you today. We need to give a big hand to all those who have spoken on this stage. They have been so amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So beautiful. One day I was in a fancy dinner. And there were about 10 or 11 courses. Have you ever been to one of those things where you just sit down and the waiter just puts something in front of you? Appetizer number one, appetizer number two, soup, salad. It just goes nonstop. Somewhere around the seventh or eighth, the waiter brings in front of me this little bowl with a dollop of ice cream. It wasn't really ice cream, but it was cold. And I said to my seatmate, finally it's over. And my seatmate, this was the first time it ever happened to me. My seatmate looked at me and said, Novo, that's just something to clean your palate. And I said, I didn't know my palate was dirty. And she said, no, that, that's something cold and sweet just to, to remove all the taste in your mouth. Because, and then she says, there's more. I want you to touch again that person beside you and say, happy 50. And then I want you to hold someone's hand. Can you hold someone's hand? Grip it hard until the bones crush. And tell that person, there's more. The charismatic renewal is 50 years old, but there's more. But there's more. Someone asked me, will there be a charismatic renewal 50 years from now? And I'm, I, I, I was just like you. I said, yes, yes, but on one condition. And, and this condition I need to share with you today. Bishop Bakani spoke about the charismatic renewal in the past. And Father Bart Pastor talked about the charismatic renewal today. And I was given the assignment to talk about the charismatic renewal in the future. Will there be a charismatic renewal in the future? The answer is, it depends. Tell somebody beside you, it depends. Because every speaker who spoke here on stage said, the Holy Spirit asks you to do something. You see, the Holy Spirit wants the renewal to go on. But you see, it depends on our response. And I'm going to read to you one scripture passage from the book of John chapter 12. I'm going to use my phone like Father Bart in reading the Bible because young people uses, use the phone to read the Bible. And in John chapter 12, verse 24, I posted here as well. Let's read together. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, what happens? I want you to raise your hand if you want to bear much fruit. Do you want to bear much fruit in your family life? Do you want to bear much fruit to all the singles here in your love life? Do you want to bear much fruit in your ministry? Do you want to bear much fruit in your jobs, in your career, in your businesses? Then you need to do one thing. You need to do one thing. 
Do you want the charismatic renewal to be present and alive and active and strong 50 years from now? Then you need to do one thing. Ask me what? I don't know if you can handle my message. Because it's a strong message. It's a message that is very, very disturbing. But I'm going to tell you anyway because you have no choice. Are you ready? Say, I'm ready. All right, here it is. Hold someone's arm. Grip it hard. Tell that person, it's time to die. It's time to die. You want to bear fruit in any area of your life, you've got to die. Married people, raise your hand. You want to bear fruit in that marriage? You've got to learn to die. You've got to. Can I tell you a story? I, I, I want to move a little bit, you know, just off tangent from the charismatic renewal topics. Just, just to go a little bit personal because, because I, I, I want to speak to your life. I've been married for 20 years. It's been a great marriage. But it didn't start that way. It started rough. In my first year of marriage, we were fighting. I made her cry many times. And, and, and there, were, there were many times I wanted to change her. Not, not, not the person like, like with another person. No, I, I'm talking about I wanted to change her personality. I wanted to change her character. I wanted to wait. You, you, you know, one of the things that, that I, I realized that I wanted to do in her life was I wanted, to be, wanted her to be like me. You see, I, I'm a guy who, who's very calm. You know, if there's a volcano erupting right there, I'll, I'll tell my wife, oh, look, a volcano <laughs> is erupting. <laughs> that, that, that's my personality. My wife is not like that. My wife is the total opposite. So one of the, one of the shocks of my life was when she started driving. Man, the first time I sat on the passenger's seat and she drove, she, I didn't know that she was a noisy driver. Can I explain? It's like, you know, the moment she would step on the accelerator and start moving in the car, she, like she, it would be an endless, non-stop commentary about everyone. Like, like, you know, a bus cuts in front of us, she says, Yung driver na yan, kailangan tanggalin ng licensya. You know? And, and she would talk and talk. There, there would be this pregnant woman that will, that will be crossing the street. And she said, Mrs. Buntis ka pa man din. mag tumingin ka naman ng kaliwa ka. Nan, hindi ka ba tinuruan ng nanay mo? You know, she would just go on and on and on. And it's not, it's, it's not like she's talking to anyone because the windows are closed. You know, she'll talk about that driver, you know, that just cut in front of us. And, and, and I say, sweetheart, the windows are closed. The driver can't hear you. Why, why are you keeping, you know? And she says, because I'm stressed. And, and I said, but you're, you're giving me stress. You know, you're just... But then somewhere along the way, on the second year and the third year of our marriage, we began to fight less. In fact, we have not been fighting, you know, as in, in the, uh, you won't believe this, but for, for the past, you know, several years. We've, and and here, here's why. You want to know why? There is a common denominator between all the happy marriages I've seen. You want to know? I, I have met so many husbands and wives all over the world. And when I meet a happy couple with a fantastic marriage, I see one common denominator. Ask me what? The husband is dead.
Ask me why. You see, that's the design of God. The Bible says that the husband is supposed to love the wife the way Christ loved the church. And Jesus died for that church. And so the husband is supposed to die. And you see, when the husband dies, the wife responds. You got what I'm saying? That's the design of God. Today I've accepted my wife. And, and, and th that's the beauty. Today you ask me, you know, when, 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 she, when, when she now drives and she's there again and in her endless commentary, you know, I'm smiling. And, and sometimes she, she's talking and she says, why are you smiling? And I said, nothing, it's, please, you know, there's, oh, look, look, there's a bus, but, oh, oh, look, there's a pregnant woman, you know, what are you going to say about that, you know? And, and I said, oh, why are you so happy? And I don't know, it's entertainment for me. It's, uh, I love it. Just, if there's a husband or a wife in front of you, if there's, if there's a married person beside you, can you tell that person, Tanggapin mo na lang siya. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking, just qualify. Can I qualify? I'm not talking of abuse. I'm not talking of alcoholism. I'm not talking of adultery. That you do not accept. You do not accept that. I'm talking of those, those idiosyncrasies and those little annoyances and those little irritations. Now, can I go back to my topic? I'm talking about ministry and why the charismatic and you will still be alive 50 years from now. We've got to learn to die. I was in another restaurant and there was this guy who came up to me and said, are you Brother Bo? And I said, yes. And, and he started introducing himself to me and he said, um, I, I come from this, you know, prayer group. And, and, and I, I recognize the prayer group. He said, we, we, we're, we've been an old community. He said, yes, I know. You know, it's a beautiful community, I said. And he said, Brother Bo, it really, it really is a beautiful community, but, but, but we're having a problem. Can you help us? Can you give advice? And I said, sure. And so this guy said, you know, once upon a time, we had so many young people, so many young people coming to our prayer meeting. Now, they're, they're gone. They're gone. You know, you know, Brother Bo, the, they're, the average age of our community, you will be shocked. And he said, what? Shock me. And he said, 60 to 70 years old. And I said, no kidding. Yes, the young people are gone. And then he says, you know, we, my friend wants to change the name of our community. To what? He said, he, he told us that our name should be pre-departure community. And I said, wag naman. Napaka-obvious. Gawin mong subtle. Almost heaven prayer group. And then he said this, he said, you know, Bo, young people lack, I mean, I mean, put it this way, may problema yung kabataan sa commitment. Hindi nila kaya yung ginagawa ng mga matatanda. And, and I, I said this, and I told him, you know what? Young people don't have a problem with commitment. The old people have a problem with commitment. And he, and he said, Op, 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 op. Coming mga older people were very committed. And I said, I agree. The problem is not the lack of commitment. The problem is wrong commitments. You have a wrong commitment. And I asked him a question. I said, when, were you, when was the community born? And he said, 32 years ago. 32 years ago. Here's my question. And, and I hope you, 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 don't, you don't take this as, as uh, offensive, in an offensive way, but do you sing the same songs that you sang 32 years ago? And, and he said, mean son, but is there, so, so, so is that what you're saying? We, we need to change our songs? And I said, no, no. I, I'm, I'm just trying to pick a reflection of your mindset. I said, the reason why young people don't come to a prayer meeting 
is because the prayer meeting is not comfortable for them. And I gave them an example. I said, there are times when members of our prayer group come up to me and they say, usefully older people, Brother Bo, maingay yung music ministry. Ang lakas ng drums. Tsaka yung speaker, yung, yung tunog ng gitara, yung bass, ramdam ko sa dibdib, akala ko mag heart attack ako. Brother Bo, pwede bang sabihin mo sa music ministry na yan? Kunting, ang lakas eh. You know, I smile and I tell them, thank you for that comment. That means we're doing the right thing. Pag nagre-reklamo ang mas matatanda sa prayer meeting, na kesyo, hindi na nila maintindihan yung music, sobrang bilis na mga kanta, masyadong malakas, ang ibig sabihin, tama ang ginagawa ng music ministry. I'll tell you, tanongin niyo sa akin, bakit? Alam niyo, Sa prayer meeting namin, pag umiikot ako, and I see, ha, habang tumutugtog yung worship, pag nakikita ko yung mga matatanda, yung paa nila, ha, gumaganong-ganon, may problema yun. Nagugustuhan ng matatanda yung music ng prayer meeting, may problema! Kailangan hindi nila gusto. Kasi yung music dapat para sa kabataan. Ba- Brother Bo, bakit? Brothers and sisters, yung mga matatanda katulad natin, matanda na ako. Yung mga matatanda katulad natin, mamamatay na tayo eh. And we need to die to ourselves so that our children will feel at home in our prayer meetings. Yung teaching, dapat para sa kanila, hindi para sa matatanda. Yung, lah- yung lahat, yung lights, yung, yung ambience, lahat dapat para sa, mata- sa, sa mga bata. Yung mga matatanda, tiisin nyo na lang. Die to yourselves. Because, guys, listen to me. The charismatic renewal has to be alive 50 years from now. The only way for that to happen is for the older people to sacrifice. Die to themselves. Sacrifice to your own preference. Sacrifice to your own convenience. Sacrifice to your own desires. And do this for your children and your grandchildren. I'd like to call on a dear friend who's going to help me give this talk. He, he took over our, our prayer meeting in PICC. He's, I've known him for so many years now. He's going to bless you. Please, there, there are going to be two other speakers. Very short talks who's going to help me give this talk. Please welcome Alvin Barcelona. Isang maligayang kaarawan sa ating lahat. Palakpakan natin ang ating simbahan. Ako po muli si Alvin Barcelona, isa sa mga punong lingkod at preachers ng Light of Jesus family. Marami din po ako mga papel na ginagampanan sa ministry at sa aking buhay. Ako rin po ay isang teacher at educator. Kahit mukhang hindi. Baka ayaw maniwala nung iba, mas mukha akong addict kesa sa educator. Ako din po ay uh, isang radio at TV host at ako din po ay isang musikero at mga awit. Katunayan, maraming taon ako naging front act ng isang sikat na singer. Alam niyo ibig sabihin ng front act? Yung pag wala pang tao, ako muna. Kung hinihintay na dumami yung tao tapos pag marami na at mainit na sila, ay uh, kailangan ko nang tumabi, ipakilala yung 
hinihintay nila at pumunta sa likod. Literally sa backstage. Hindi para umuwi, kundi para suportahan ko naman yung sumunod na nagtatanghal sa akin. Alam niyo, simpleng-simple yung natutunan kong yon nung ako ay performer, pero nadala ko po yan sa paglilingkod. Yung ideya na kailangang minsan nasa harapan ka upang mamuno, magsalita, at minsan kailangan tumabi at ipakilala yung susunod, at minsan kailangang nasa likod upang maging tulak, <laughs> pusher, <laughs> encourager, baka matokhang tayo dito, ha? At magtiwala na yung pumalit sa iyo doon ay may kakayanan ding maglingkod. Sige, wag niyong pigilan kung gusto niyong pamalakpak, no? Katunayan sa ating pananampalataya, may tawag din ako dyan, pamilyar kayo. Yung nasa front ka, ang tawag doon, joyful mystery. Yung tumabi ka, minsan masakit yan eh, sorrowful mystery. Tapos akala nila pag nasa likod ka na, mas, ano, more sorrowful. Hindi, maniwala kayo sa akin, yun ang glorious mystery. Totoo. Katunayan, kahit dun sa tatlong misteryong yun, makikita nyo. Hindi ka pwedeng tumawid o lumaktaw at mag-shortcut ng joyful to glorious. Dapat dadaan ka ng sorrowful eh. Uy, nabanggit ni Brother Bo sa mag-aasawa, ganun din. ba? Diba? Talagang tayong lahat nagsimula ng joyful. ba? Diba? Honeymoon. May kaibigan ko si Ray Valera, kababayan ko yun sa Bulacan. Ang galing gumawa ng kanta ni Ray Valera. Parang yung tatlong stages na joyful, sorrowful, at glorious sa mag-aasawa, may kanta siya. Kasi pag bago kayong kasal, joyful, ang kanta sa inyo ni Ray Valera, Pangako sa'yo, ipaglalaban ko. Di ba? Si bagong kasal eh. Pero pansin nyo, matapos ang ilang taon, sana hindi ilang buwan lang, iba na kanta ni Ray Valera sa inyong mag-asawa. Eto na. Mayroong lungkot sa iyong mga mata at kay bigat ng iyong dinadala. Anyari! Oo, oh, sabi kasi ng mga psychologists, yung honeymoon naging reality stage. Bakit? Eh kasi, bago ka tayong kasali, nung umuwi si Mister, sumasalubong si Mrs. dala ang chinelas. Yung aso tumatahol pa. Ow, ow, how romantic. Ngayon, pag umuwi si Mister, yung aso namin dalang chinela, si Mrs. na yung ow, 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 ow. Nabaliktad na eh. Hindi ko alam ba't kayo pumapalakbak. Nagkakwento lang ako. Mukhang relate na relate kayo ha. Eh ba paano naman kasi nung bagong asal kami, si Mister, ang kapal ng buhok. Late ng chan, may abs. Ngayon yung buho ko matras, yung, yung tiyan ang umabante. Sabay pa. <laughs> o ikaw din naman eh, sabihin ni Mister. Bago tayo mag-asawa, pag uwi ko, amoy pinipig ka. Bagong sipilyo, kissable lips. Ngayon pag uwi ko, pakis nga. Andali, kunin ko muna yung pustitya ko. Okay ba? <laughs> mga dikabit na lahat. Yung mga pilik mata, ditanggal. <laughs> mga buhok, disabit. <laughs> Uy, pero makinig kayo. Pero mangyayari yun eh. In fact, kailangang mangyari. Tanong nyo bakit? Kasi sabi ng mga psychologists, pagkatapos mo, pag napagtagumpayan mo yon, doon ka pupunta sa maturity stage, sa glorious stage. Kasi ang kanta na sa'yo ni Ray Valera, ganito na. Mahal kita, basta't mahal kita, Iniisip nila ay hindi mahalaga, mahal kita maging. Kita nyo, nagmature yung pag-ibig, naging mas matatag, naging produkto ng desisyon. Kaya yung sabi ni Brother Bo kanina, tama eh. Sisimula ka ng ecstasy, ng dream, ng honeymoon. Pero kailangan talaga tumatabi ka na mamatay ka eh. 
nagsasakripiso ka upang pagpunta mo sa likod, it will be a glorious decision of maturity na may apply din natin sa ating mga buhay paglilingkod. Alam nyo, sa amin pong community, we continuously find ways on how to institutionalize change. <laughs> a little tricky term there because change is supposed to be dynamic. Institutionalizing is making it permanent. <laughs> so how would you blend the two? So kami, we continue to experiment and explore and commit lots of mistakes. And uh, after a couple of years, no, oh, a, a few years ago, we experimented on this. Nagbigay po kami ng three-year term sa aming mga ministry leaders. Para dun sa tatlong taong yon, umunta siya sa harapan, to lead, to initiate, to model, to be the example. But within those three years, say on the second year, tumatabi-tabi na siya dahil nag race na siya ng bago at maaring dapat mas batang leader na literal na katabi niya to coach, to guide, pinapasahan ng iyong nalalaman, ini-empower. Upang matapos ang tatlong taon, Handa ka nang pumunta sa likod upang to push him, to support him, and to trust fully na kaya na niya. Abay, anong mangyayari sa'yo? Tapos na ba ang buhay mo sa paglilingkod? Ay, hindi. Ang paglilingkod, alam natin, ay habang buhay. Kasi pwedeng nasa likod ka ng isang ministry, pero nasa harapan ka ng isang bagong ministry. Ha? Nasa likod ka na ng music ministry, pero nasa harapan ka naman ng couples ministry. Or nasa likod ka ng music ministry nitong chapter na ito, pero doon sa kabilang chapter, nasa harapan ka naman. Habang buhay naman ang paglilingkod. Or patuloy kang naglilingkod na wala ng titulo o posisyon. Serving without a title. In fact, The three-year period is an inspiration from our Lord Jesus Himself. At alam natin na sa loob lamang ng tatlong taon, ang Panginoong Jesus ay namuno, nangaral, gumawa ng mga kababalaghan at mga himala, ah, nagpagaling ng mga may sakit. Pero kaan din sabay ng pamumuno, siya din ay tumatabi at tumawag at nagsanay ah, at nagturo sa mga tinawag na alagad, mga apostoles. Upang nung dumating na ang panahon na siya ay namatay, muling nabuhay, at umakyat sa langit, abay, pinagkatiwala niya ng buo sa kanyang mga alagad ang pagpapatuloy ng gawain. That's why in the Great Commission, you see that Jesus trusted and turned over to His disciples whom He trained. That's why this is an, a conscious and deliberate effort. You know, I believe that change should be deliberated. Sinasadya, pinaplano. You don't leave it to chance. Kaya ang Panginoon, alam natin, deliberate niyang ginawa. Kaya nung sinabi niyang, go and make disciples of all nations, abay, binigyan pa niya ng kapangyarihan, pinasahan niya ng kapangyarihan sa pamamagitan ng Spiritu Santo. At yan may hindi bago sa atin. Ang ating simbahan ay ganyan. Hindi ba't kahanga-hanga sila, Father, na mumumuno ng isang parokya, ibibigay ang lahat, pero matapos ang ilang taon, tatabi at lilipat. Napaka dakilang pagpapakita ng pamumuno, pero ng kababaang loob, at ng tiwala na yung anyang inalaga ang parokya, pag siya'y umalis na, aalagaan din yon ng susunod. Kaya sa ehemplo ng Panginoong Hesus, sa pamumuno ng simbahan, tayong mga nasa komunidad, may lakas ng loob to go in front, to lead, pero mayroon din humility at generosity na tumabi, magbasa, magturo. And above all, we have that trust and faith na pag tayo'y pumunta na sa likod, ang Diyos ipagpapatuloy niya ang gawain niya doon sa papalit. At sa ganitong paraan, 
tunay na buhay na buhay at kasabik-sabik ang hinaharap ng ating mga komunidad at ng simbahan. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. Thank you, Alvin. And I, I'm going to call on a younger guy who's going to preach here with you for just a short message on that whole thing of what we're talking about now. And I don't want you only to listen to our message, but to see what we're doing here. We're calling, calling on a younger man who's been preaching in, in so many wonderful ways. 600 people go to him every Sunday uh, in his prayer meeting. Please welcome Mike Vinyas. Can we just give a big hand to Brother Bo for a powerful message? Hallelujah. Good evening, everybody. My name is Mike Vinyas, and there are many times that when I come up to speak, people mistake me for Brother Mike Villarde. Dahil pareho po kaming Mike at Viren ang apelido namin, pareho. But it's great, great to be here this evening. I could say that I came into the charismatic renewal when I was 14 years old in a Youth Life in the Spirit seminar back in the year of 2001. And so you could say I'm part of that latter 50 years. <laughs> so praise be to God. And today I'm 31 years old and I've been serving the Lord for the last 17 years. And I'll tell you it has really been a fantastic but also a challenging journey. But God is faithful. God is good. Amen. 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 Today I want to preach to you or just give you a short message around that same idea that Brother Bo mentioned earlier, around the idea that there is more in store. There is more in store. And it's interesting that the Apostle Paul speaks about that same idea when he was writing a letter to the church in Ephesus in the book of Ephesians chapter th 3. Verse 20 to 21. It says here, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church in Christ Jesus through all generations. Everybody say all generations. Forever and ever. Touch five people around you, tell that person, there's still more in store. There's still more in store. Allow me to introduce to you my wife. I think we have a photo of her. This is my wife. Her name is Vea. And she was the one leading worship here earlier. And she's just an amazing woman. She loves the Lord. At mahilig po siya sa mga hayop, kaya siguro ako yung pinakasalan niya. I love Corinth, si Lord, kayo naman, no? But last May 6, we celebrated our second wedding anniversary. So, Brother Bo, kung kayo po, 20 years, 2 years pa lang. So, I'm learning to die to myself. <laughs> and for our anniversary, we went to Baguio. Why Baguio? Because two years ago in our wedding ceremony, one of our ninongs, ang regalo niya sa amin was a three-night stay, all expense paid in Baguio. So we were so blessed, we were so grateful, and we decided to avail of it this year. So punta kami doon, we checked into this place, and when we got to the room, we were so surprised, we were so shocked, because what was assigned to us, what was given to us, was not just a room, but a corner suite na may sala set and there was this beautiful view of Baguio and it was just a huge room and we just enjoyed our time there. We, of course, we rested, we relaxed, we ate, we read, we prayed and we've been praying for a baby and we pray that we will have a baby this coming year so we didn't just pray, of course, for that to happen, Right? But we just really had a great time. I think we have a picture of that. Ayan, yan kami po, two weeks ago. Now, on our last day, we were already gonna settle or check out. Now, we knew na 
Ang libre lang doon in that whole gift was the room. We knew that the only thing free would be the room. What we didn't know was that, was that there was more in store. So as we came to the reception area, as I came to the front desk manager pulling out my wallet to settle for the bill of the meals that we ate for four days in that place, as I was pulling it out, suddenly the front desk manager said, Sir, that will no longer be necessary because your bill has been settled by your sponsor. At doon narinig ko yun, sabi ko, eh, no, nakakahiya, eh, that can't be, we, we will pay, we will have to settle it. And he said, no sir, I've been given the strict um, instructions that you will not have to pay and it has already been paid by your sponsor. And so we were grateful, we were blessed, we were just blown away by this man's generosity. Part of me was thinking, nakakahiya, ang dami namin order kasi ang takaw namin mag-asawa. But part of me was thinking, eh, sana pala nag-order pa kami kasi libre naman pala. Di ba? You see, friends, there is still more in store. And I believe that as we celebrate 50 years of the charismatic renewal, and I could say I'm a recipient of that 50 years, I could say, and I believe today, that there is still more in store. Amen? that we can look back, we can look back at the last how many years and we ought to praise God. We ought to thank Him for all the goodness, the grace, and the glory that He has made manifest in our lives, in our communities, in our ministries. And it has all been good. And we thank Him. But you know what I realized? God's not done yet. God's not done yet. There is still more in store. Friends, I believe that after 50 years, our best days are not behind us. Our best days are in front of us. I declare tonight that the charismatic renewal in the Philippines will be alive 50 years from now. And I declare that the best is yet to come. Come on. The best is yet to come. Now some of us, and I'm, I'm guilty of this as well, as I'm growing old, kinukuya na ako sa ministry and all of that. <laughs> Some of us will somehow catch ourselves saying this. Oh, those were the golden days, the heydays of our community. Oh, those were the good old days. And there's really nothing wrong with that. That's good to really look back and cherish all of that. But may I just suggest to you tonight that maybe along with that, that we would have a mindset that would look forward into the future with great faith, with expectancy, with excitement for all the miraculous things God has about to move in our midst. Amen? That we would have that expectation. Because God's grace is unending. God's love is unfailing. His mercy is unconditional. And so there's got to be more. In the next 50 years, as we look ahead, I believe that we've got to be prepared for more blessing. We've got to be prepared for more anointing. We've got to be, we've got to be prepared for more favor, more power over our lives, over our communities. And why is that so? Because if you look outside, just step out of this arena and you will see that there are more souls to save, more marriages that need to be restored, more poor that we need to raise up, more ministries that need to be built, more foundations that need to be launched, more communities that need to begin because the mission demands more. is still more. And so friends, as we look back, let's look back with gratitude, but let's look ahead with greater faith because indeed there's more in store. And so even if sometimes we may find ourselves in a rut, 
we may find ourselves in a mess. We may find ourselves stuck and we're feeling that our communities are not growing. It's hitting this ceiling. It's hitting this barrier. And all our efforts are wasted. Sometimes we feel that way. But let me just encourage you tonight to not give up, to run your race, to continue to believe that there's more in store. And how do we do this? By remaining faithful to what God has entrusted to us. By remaining faithful to the calling that God has placed over our lives. And as Brother Bo said earlier, by choosing to die to ourselves each and every day so that the next generation will rise, take over, and take this thing further in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Give Him praise. Give Him glory. Hallelujah. And lastly, that we would have genuine love, genuine love for the lost, the least, because if we do these things, if we do these three things, I believe that we will see breakthrough in our communities. We will see the Holy Spirit move like never before. We will see the gospel advance in spheres of society, in territories, in areas that we never thought was possible in Jesus' name. And when this happens, my friends, brothers and sisters, when this happens, we will witness more healing. We will witness more deliverance, more revival, more conversion, more transformation in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's still more in store. I want to end with this story. And this story always gives me hope that there's more in store. One day I was preaching in our prayer meeting and I in the middle of my message, this big guy comes into our prayer meeting with muscles and all and tattoos all over his arms. And I recognized right away that this guy is a first-timer. So after my message, after my talk, I stepped down and I came to him right away and I said, Welcome. What's your name? And I found out his name is Paul and that he was dragged by his girlfriend to attend our prayer meeting. And I said, okay, that's nice. I hope to see you again next week. And you know what happened? He came back the next week. And then the next week. And then the next week. At one point, I came to him and I said, bro, kapi naman tayo sang beses. Let's have coffee. And we did. And in that coffee date, in that discussion, I learned that he is a drug addict. I learned that He's part of a gang, and he, and this made me fall off my chair. He's a hitman. Not that he kills people, but he bibigyan siya ng pangalan ng isang tao, tapos patutumbahin niya yun. And then when I heard that, I just told him, you're welcome at our community. We accept you as you are. Keep coming back. We're going to be here for you. We want to help you in any way that we can. And then I told him this. Why don't you serve with us? Because I found out he's a good music minister. He plays the drums. And so I asked him, why don't you audition to our music team? And he did. And he played beautifully. One time I remember he was at our rehearsals. And he came up to one of my leaders. And he said this. Sabi ko, sabi niya, Bro, paano ba to? Tutugtog tayo bukas. Eh, yung mga tato ko, may, makikita, nasa harap pa naman tayo. In fact, I remember it's Vernon that he, one of our, our keyboardists then, that was, he was with at that time. And you know what this guy said? He said, okay lang yan. We accept you just as you are. Come and play your best for the glory of God. And so he goes on to eventually become our musical director for our prayer gathering. And now he is the one who disciples, who, who trains most of our worship ministers. And it's amazing how from a violent and toxic lifestyle, God transformed him by his grace. By just simply attending and being faithful and serving, God transformed him from that lifestyle to a worship lifestyle. I thank God for that. 
But friends, what gives me hope that there's still more with that story is because there are so much more Pauls out there who are hurting, who are broken, who are in darkness, who are in sin. And it breaks my heart for them not to have a home. And I know that it is urgent for us to be able to bring the saving love of God into their lives. And so my prayer is this. Are you with me? My prayer is this, is that our communities, our prayer gatherings, our ministries, our organizations would be more like the father in the prodigal son. That we would look out intently every day, looking for the lost, searching for those who've gone astray, running to them and embracing them and coming to them with so much love and throwing a party for them because they have been welcomed home. Their home in our community communities, their home, in our ministries. But friends, that would entail that there's more work, more work to be done. And so I want to leave you with this, with these questions or with these questions. For the sake of the poles around us, the lost, the least, and the last, serve more? Can we give more? Can we pray more? And can we love more for their sake? Is that a yes? <laughs> we live in a broken world. And it's time we flung open the gates of our ministries, of our church, of our communities to embrace the lost, the least, and the last. And I believe as we, we are faithful to that yes, that there is still so much more. I believe that God is with us. That we serve a God who is faithful. We serve a God who never fails. We serve a God who in Scripture says is able to do immeasurably more, exceedingly and abundantly, far more than whatever we could ask, think, or imagine. So friends, you've got to believe tonight and in the days ahead, in the weeks ahead, in the months ahead, in the years ahead, as you continue to follow Christ, that there is more in store. Come on, say this with me. There is more in store. One more time. There is more in store. One more time. There is more in store. High five as much people around you and tell that person, there is more in store. There is more in store. There is more in store in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And so if you believe that today, can I invite you to stand once more? And if this is a comfortable position for you, can I invite you to lift up your hands? Just close your eyes with me as I lead you into prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the last 50 years for all that you have done. For all that you're doing now. And we thank you, God, in advance for all the good and great things you're going to do for your glory in the next 50 years in the future. We're believing, Father, as a church, as a community, as one body of Christ, as one family, that there's more in store. That there is more blessing, there is more healing, there is more breakthrough, there is more abundance, more provision, more favor in our future. Because you are already there preparing the way for us. And so tonight just empower us to be faithful. Empower us to die to ourselves and empower us to love the least, the lost, and the last. We surrender to you, God, our future. And we will not fret nor fear because we know that we serve a faithful God who never fails. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Keep those hands up high. Receive the blessing, the favor, and the power of God tonight as we sing. Thank you.
Jesus, you never fail. Mountains bow at your feet. Oceans part when you speak. Beauty forms when you breathe. Jesus, you never Come on, from the front to the back, we sing every voice.
God bless you. You can be seated. Salamat ang marami, Brother Bo, Brother Alvin, Brother Mike, and the Light of Jesus community. Ayan, ano. So, uh, meron pang nag, uh, dumating na hindi pa natin nababanggit yung Art uh, Art of Prayer community, Our Lady of Fatima. So, brothers and sisters, uh, meron na namang isang mangyayaring napakalaking event dito sa Big Dome. Come June 30, and to invite you, would like to give you the youngers, the youngsters, or the millennials of the Lord's Flock community. Good evening, po. Good evening, everyone. Happy birthday, Church. Happy birthday, po, sa ating lahat. And naririto po kami. I'm Brother Kent. And I'm Brother Justin. At naririto po kami para po inbitahan lahat po ng kabataan, singles and youth po na naririto po ngayon sa bulwagang ito na umaten po sa 8th installment of the Singles and Youth Faith on Fire Conference, The Relentless 2. Yes, the Singles and Faith Youth on Fire Conference is the, a gathering of singles and youth which aims to revive the youth of the church. So what do we have in store for us here? All right. Ang, ang mangyayari po ngayon po dito, uh, isang napakagandang praise and worship, a spirit-filled praise and worship conference, a concert, and then may mga powerful uh, life testimonies of the singles and youth, and then inspirational talk. And one of the keynote speaker po natin sa event po na ito ay walang iba, kundi ang His Eminence, Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle. Now to formally invite everyone who is here, we would like you guys to watch this. and sisters in Christ, we have heard, we have witnessed so many brave, courageous, and beautiful testimonies from our young people. And these testimonies come not only from stories of success, but also stories of pain, struggles, abandonment. But from those stories emerged the gospel encountered in Jesus Christ. And we hope to be continuously inspired, not only by our ministry to the young, but by the young also, who have their stories to tell. So we have another opportunity to be inspired, to be renewed. So, let us come to Relentless 2, Singles and Youth. It will be held at the Spark and the Meta Coliseum on the 30th of June, 2018 starting at 2 p.m. Please come. Be intensely evangelized, energized, encouraged for mission. See you there. Yes, we would like to invite everyone to Relentless 2. It is a free Admission conference, wala pong babayaran. Meron lang po kaming ibibigay po na free tickets po sa lahat. And for more details, uh, you guys could go to our website. It's at www.lordsflock.org. Or you could also visit our Facebook and Instagram pages. It's at SYFOF. And pwede nyo rin po kami tawagan po sa office po namin at 376-5780. And pwede nyo po akong hanapin. Nandun po ako every day. Ayan. So we would like to see everyone there in June 30 here at the Smart Araneta Coliseum. That's at 2 to 7 p.m.
And with that, be joyful always and God bless your hearts. Palapakan po natin si Lord. Thank you very much. We had been here in about uh, seven hours or so at uh, the big dome. And maybe everybody now missed a prominent figure on every Pentecost. May we call on Brother Kajo Tamayo and Father Hans Magdurulang on stage to award a posthumous recognition of the services of our very own, the jolly good fellow of the charismatic renewal movement, none other than we missed a lot, Reverend Father Eric Santos. <laughs> Sa pinti ng buhay, sa sinaputunan, sa iyak ng sanggol, nakabong sila. May muting at sa mukha. Sa bawat karapatan, buhay ang siyang ipinaglalaban. Buhay na kay ganda at kay kulay, kay sarap. Ayan. We really God, miss Father God. Eric. Palakpakan muli natin ang pinakamamahal natin, kaibigan na miss natin ng sobra, Father Eric Santos. Father Eric. Yes. Palakpakan muli natin. Come on, brothers and sisters. Kaya... Palakpakan ng Panginoon, Father yes. Eric. Binigay sa atin. At para pasalamatan din natin si Father Eric sa pamamagitan ng kanyang pamilyang nandito, tawagin po natin ang kanyang family members, Elinita Gimba, Al Justrel Nino Carpio and Jeremy Valbuena. Ang pamilya po ni Father Eric. Palakpakan po natin sila to receive our plaque of appreciation and gratitude. Brother Kajo, kayo na po ang magbasa. Posthumous Award is hereby presented to the late Reverend Father Enrique Eric Y. Santos OFS. For more than 30 years of his untiring service, generous support, selfless dedication, and spiritual direction towards the dynamic growth of charismatic renewal under the diocese, Archdiocese of Manila, in particular, 
and the whole country in general. Given this 19th day of May 2018, at the National Pentecost celebration commemorating the Golden Jubilee of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal Philippines, held at Smart Araneta Coliseum, signatory, of course, yours truly, and our spiritual director, Father Hans Bagdurulang. Father? <coughs> Salamat po ng marami sa family ni uh, Reverend Father Eric Santos. Uh, brother, brother Eric, brothers and sisters, the Marian Solidarity for uh, uh, Pope Francis, a Marian group consolidating all the Marian groups, has asked me to make this announcement, and I acceded. On Monday, on Monday, oh, by the way, Pope Francis has declared indeed that May 31, May 21, which is on Monday, as Mother Mary, Mother of the Church, a feast of Mary, Mother of the Church. And uh, there will be a celebration for this Feast of Mary, Mother of the Church, at San Sebastian Church at 3 p.m. There will be two speakers about Mother Mary being not only Mother of God, not only being our Mother, not only being Mother of the Earth, but most especially as Mother of the Church. It will be at 3 p.m. at San Sebastian. For all those who are Marian devotees, and all those who really believe that she is our mother, our mother, the clergy, the consecrated.